Hey everybody, thanks a lot for checking back. This is Dave from Free Run Speed. Today I'm going to talk to you about my current shoe rotation in January. Let's talk long run for a minute. So depending on where I'm going to run, if it's going to be on the roads and my legs are, very, are tired, I run in the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. Every other run, if my run, legs feel good and it's going to be on mixed roads, trails, whatever, then I run in the Endorphin Pro. And I do that because I want to run long and I kind of want to save my legs a little bit um, so that I can run the next day. For my easier days, let's say it's a 40 minute run or it could be up to a 90 minute run, but I don't care about pace. I don't really care about distance. I just care about time on my feet and I want it to feel super easy and just chill. Then I use this Triumph from Saucony, which I talked about earlier, or I use the Fresh Foam 1080 version 12, which I gave a review of the version 10 that lasted well over 450 miles. I could probably still run in it now, um, almost three years later. Just the 1080 is just plush, comfortable shoes to run in. And I got this 1080 one because it's just so darn good looking. And I needed a shoe to work in this year when I went to events that were New Balance events. So I bought it and then I just decided to keep running in it. And so it's one of these two shoes, all depending on how I feel. On workout days, Days like today where I did a series of hill repeats, followed up by some 200s, all in the total of nine miles of running. My go-to shoe is the Endorphin Speed. So like if I don't really have a shoe that I'm testing and one that I know works, it's always gonna go back to the Endorphin Speed. This is the Endorphin Speed 3. Today, because it was raining outside and not, it wasn't cold. I'm, no way, I live in San Diego. I can't tell you it was cold. It was cold for us, but it wasn't cold. Um, I ran in the Run Shield version of the Endorphin Speed. Okay, always the go-to. It's just, I love this shoe um, until someone comes out with a better shoe. This will be my go-to shoe for workout days and virtually any other day that I don't feel like running in the other shoes I talked about. I did pick up the Magic Speed back in, uh, I think, October, maybe October, November. And I did it because in the work I do, I have to tell the difference between the Magic Speed and the Meta Speed Sky. And my gosh, if you see them running by you, it's it's not easy to tell, oh, that there's the Meta Speed Sky and there's the Magic Speed because they're the same color blocking generally. And at speed, they kind of look like the same shoe. So I had to get it so that I could tell the difference. So I knew what the Magic Speed really looked like up close so that I could tell the difference. That said, I did not like the original Magic Speed. And you can probably go back in the reviews and, and realize that I didn't like it. It was, it was firm and I just didn't get why it was in the market. I didn't understand. This one, the first time I started running in it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the same darn shoe. But then I don't know what happened. Like 20 minutes into that run, all of a sudden, either my feet woke up or the shoe needed that little break in time, it all of a sudden became a different shoe. So what, am, what do I mean by that? The, the Magic Speed was a very firm shoe. And this one started out 
almost at the same firmness, but all of a sudden the, the midsole gave in and started to feel more alive. It's still, it has a plate in it, so it's still rather stiff. But the, this midsole is just so much better wrapped around that plate than the original Magic Speed that I get why people run marathons in it. It's why I'm seeing more and more of them and it's why I had to tell the difference. I get it. I, I, it makes sense now. The other day, I put these on to go for a run and my left foot felt perfect and my right foot just felt like, ah, oh, there's something wrong. And I, it took me a while and then I thought, wait a second. So I stopped and I pulled the laces down tight over my foot, like really locked my foot into the shoe. And because I'm a runner and goofy, because I adjusted the right shoe, I had to go back and adjust, readjust the left shoe to get it to match. I locked my right foot in and all of a sudden the shoe felt great again. So my point in being, this is a shoe in my opinion that you, you've got to get your foot locked in. Once it's locked in, it's going to feel really good. If you are just sloppy with putting your shoes on, I don't know that you're ever going to get the, the feel of this shoe to perfection. Hats off to the mat, to Asics and the Magic Speed 2. I, again, I get why people are running marathons in this shoe. So I've been using this for my workouts instead of the Endorphin Speed. And it's been, it's been great. It's been perfect for that. If it wouldn't have been raining, this is the shoe I would have chosen for today. But because it was raining, I chose that Run Shield Endorphin Speed. Is this shoe as good as the Endorphin Speed? I'm gonna let you tell us that. For me personally, I do really like this shoe, but that Endorphin Speed is my go-to shoe, for sure. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back later this year with new shoes that I put into the rotation. Some of these shoes will stay in the rotation, some of them will move out, but I'll talk about the new shoes that moved in. Talk to you later.